Hi there and welcome back to Luxatic. In today's video, we are looking at the types of champagne and basically a created guide for every connoisseur. While most people know what champagne is and how to enjoy one, connoisseurs know there are several different types of champagne, each of them with its own characteristics and taste varieties, and all of them made according to the official champagne method or méthode champagnaise and coming from the Champagne region of France. Champagne is at its core a sparkling wine, one of the most famous wines in the world, but the process of making it is complex and it's also what gives Champagne its special character. The traditional method involves the distillation of grapes into still wine and then getting it through a second distillation process after adding yeast and sugar to the wine, creating carbon dioxide and lees. Lees, which are yeast leftovers, is then removed from the bottles and replaced with a solution of wine and sugar. This whole entire process takes between several months and several years, which is the reason for the high price of champagne. Also, this cherished beverage is made only in a certain region of northern France and only from specific types of grapes specific to that region, which hence adds to that uniqueness. The end result, depending on all those types of grapes, the amount of added sugar, the producers and their subtle differences in the making process, is one of the several possible types of champagne detailed further on. Firstly, by regional classification. France's picturesque champagne region is home to 324 charming villages, each of them contributing to the region's exceptional reputation for producing world-class sparkling wines. These lovely little villages and their vineyards are classified into three distinguished categories Grand Cru, Premier Cru, and Autre Cru. Autre Cru means other crews, which is champagne made from another region than the Premier and the Grand Cru below. As the name implies, it's the least cherished region, but that doesn't mean the champagne produced from these vineyards isn't going to be good. The classification score for Autre Cru is around 80% to 89% below the Grand and the Premier Cru, but sometimes great production is better in these Autre Cru vineyards than in the other ones. Currently, Autre Cru spreads over 264 villages. Moving up the Champagne ranks, we've got the Premier Cru, which means first growth. The region comprises of 43 villages, 22% of the land for Champagne production, and reaches a score of 90 to 99%. There are several other classifications to note here for second, deuxième cru, third, troisième cru, fourth, quatrième cru, and fifth growth, cinquième cru. In the cru list, you also have grand cru. The grand cru classification comprises of a total of 17 champagne making villages, and these are the best of the best, producing only the finest French wines. As you might expect, the classification score is 100%, which means you're going to be drinking the most refined and high quality champagne there is, but don't expect this to be cheap. Another set of classification we have is by producers. So firstly, we have vignerons. Vignerons are simply independent families or persons who specialize in growing grapes and independent wine production. From planting to harvesting, they do everything by themselves. They're experts in everything concerning wines, knowing each step in the making process. Usually, these are spread into three categories. There are Recordant Manipulants, who use 95% of the grapes from their own vineyard, which is the classic way of champagne making. Then we've got Societat de Recordant, which is a group of farmers who work together to create some of the most high quality wines. And last but not least, there's Recordant Coopérateur which is a producer who prefers getting grapes from other growers instead of producing their own. When it comes to cooperatives, cooperatives are important for those communities who can't afford to grow their own grapes and the cost of vinification, so they ask for help from those who do. The champagne produced by cooperatives is sold under the Cooperative de Manipulation label, or CM. Or, by the way, this is Cooperative de Manipulation in French. Next thing we should discuss are maisons. Maisons are large champagne houses such as the renowned Dom Perignon, Pommery, or Moet and Chandon. There are 360 different types of maisons and produce wine under different labels. These are négociant manipulant or negotiate manipulant who get grapes from other growers to make their wines. Marc d'acheteur, MA, means champagne marketed under a different name. It applies to resellers, merchants, restaurateurs, or distribution chains. 
Negotiant distributors or négociants distributeurs are those buyers who purchase rights from other producers and then label and distribute champagne on their own establishments. In classification by year, we have a non-vintage and sans année. The non-vintage type of champagne means it's made without regard for a particular vintage, so it's a combination of several different vintages or harvests with various types of grapes sourced from different areas. That's 85% to 90% of all champagne produced. It's the classic type of champagne, complex, consistent and affordable, and it's the one that has been around for a very long time and continues to be produced. The vintage champagne on the other hand is produced from the grapes of a single harvest of the same year. The grape types are most often Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier and Chardonnay. Usually rarer and one of the most expensive champagne types, the vintage is aged a minimum of three years. Nowadays production has increased due to better technology and production efficiency and better prediction of the weather and conditions, so vintage champagne is found more often than in the past. Millésime. Champagne millésime is the production of a specific harvest and good year. The term itself means great vintage and it has to come from a minimum of 85% wines from that specific harvest to pass the requirements. The millésime is aged in casks for at least three years, similar to the vintage. Now let's throw a quick look at great variety. First off we have rosé. With its slight pink hue, the Rosé Champagne is a unique type of sparkling wine made from Pinot Noir and Meunier grapes. The red grapes give the Rosé a more intense flavour. Besides that, it's known that winemakers add even more still red wine during the final production phase, up to 10-15% to to add extra flavours. Then you have Blanc de Noir. The name Blanc de Noir is a little odd since it actually means white wine from black grapes but that's indeed possible since the red pigment in red grapes is actually found in the skin of the grapes and not in their flesh. Traditionally produced from Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier grapes, the Blanc de Noir Champagne features a clear pale colour with gold hints that grow more intense with age. The flavour of a Blanc de Noir is unique, soft and fruity, with just enough acidity to make tasting it more interesting but without becoming bitter. A perfect choice for any meal, the Blanc de Noir is the best blend of wines. Blanc de Blanc, meaning white from whites, the Blanc de Blanc is made from white grapes only and features a nice clear colour devoid of any red or pink hue. The grapes traditionally used here are 100% Chardonnay. In contrast to the Blanc de Noir, the Blanc de Blanc usually has a more increased acidity which makes it more enthralling but also subtle notes of nut or brioche. Usually, producers stick with a certain style, so it's not unusual for a producer that makes Blanc de Blanc to only produce this type of champagne without involving in producing Blanc de Noir and vice versa. Prestige Cuvée The Prestige Cuvée is a speciality champagne, a premium type with a very unique and impressive complexity and intensity that can't be found in any other type of champagne. This type of champagne is made from only a repeatable blend of grapes grown in some of the best vineyards, so that it can offer one of the best drinking experiences reserved for the most selective occasions. It is aged in oak barrels and each producer adds his own personal touch on the final product, giving it exquisite flavours to distinguish themselves from other producers. The Prestige Cuvée is therefore a very rare and expensive type of champagne. Champagne can be further classified by dryness and or sweetness. Champagne Doux, which has 50 plus grams of sugar added, is the sweetest type of champagne due to the sugar content, which amounts to more than 50 grams per litre. It used to be extremely popular during the 18th and the 19th centuries. Recent times has seen its popularity decreasing in favour of more dry forms of champagne, Though it's easier to make than other types, due to the decrease in popularity, Dual Champagne is harder and harder to find. Next, you have Champagne Semi-Dry or Demi-Sec, which has around 33 to 50 grams of sugar added. This is per litre of drink. Also known as Semi-Dry, it's still one of the sweeter champagnes around, second after Dual. It's got a nice sweetness to it, but it's bubbly and impressively refreshing. It generally comes packed with intense fruit flavours, which makes it extremely appropriate to be served as an aperitif, as a dessert wine, or as a base for mimosas. It's also very good in combination with various pasta dishes. And of course, we have left Champagne Dry or Sick. 
the dry of sec champagne gets somewhere between 17 and 32 grams of residual sugar per litre and it's known as being medium or moderate in sweetness. It shouldn't be compared with the usual dry wine because its sweetness is still being very noticeable and not just a subtle hint. Overall, it's the most balanced champagne in terms of dryness or sweetness and features the right amount of acidity, making it very enjoyable. Another type of champagne that has a slightly misleading title regarding its dryness, called extra dry or sick. This is still a lot sweeter than what you might expect, being used with dry wines in general. Containing between 12 and 17 grams of added sugar per litre, it's the middle ground of the champagne sweetness scale. Perfectly enjoyable as an aperitif, it's got subtle hints of fruit and sweetness. Most people think it's drier than Brut Champagne, but the truth is, it's the other way around. This therefore obviously brings us on to Champagne Brut, which has less than 12 grams of added sugar per litre. It's what French actually mean by dry. The term brut means either dry, raw or unrefined. This type of champagne is extremely delicious and a favourite of those who don't like sweet champagne. With its lovely flavours, it's good as an occasional treat and goes very well with many dishes. Its acidity is just in the right amount without being over the top and it's best served cold. Leave it in the fridge for at least 3 hours or in an ice bucket and it should be properly chill when the serving time comes. Even drier than Champagne Brut, we have Champagne Extra Brut with 0 to 6 grams of sugar added. A more and more popular choice among health conscious consumers who want to reduce sugar intake, the Extra Brut type of Champagne comes with a very low sugar content, usually somewhere between 0 and 6 grams per litre. A favourite of Asian cultures, the Extra Brut sparkling wines are popular in countries such as Japan, China or South Korea. While sugar content is reduced to a minimum, the taste doesn't stray too far away from other types of champagne, a thing which makes it even more popular. Its sweetness is a lot more subtle but the natural flavours are still there and noticeable. Champagne Brut Nature, which is no sugar added. Also known as Brut Zero or Non Dose, it's got no sugar content leaving its content unaltered, preserving the natural state. On the other hand though, these champagnes have a higher acidity when compared to the other types, but are very refreshing and truly dry. Inspired by British taste, Perrier Jouet was the pioneer of the Brut Nature Champagne, the driest type of champagne there is. As our final thoughts, no matter your taste, there's a type of champagne for everyone. We hope we've shed some light on the complex world of champagne making and all the types and labels you might find written on bottles. One thing to keep in mind here is that every type of champagne in a certain category will be mixed with another type from a different category, as in a certain type of grapes made by one kind of producer mixed to certain dryness or sweetness. Order your favourite or try them all, it's your choice. Don't forget though, with some of them, you must be sure to mind your wallets.